in 2014, the harsh reality hit me in the face that I couldn't finish time to here in my little apartment with my very limited resources. I was already battling making time one for six years and the end result was a huge compromise from my original and true vision because we simply didn't have the money and the resources to make productions this big yet. At that point I had a little burnout and I knew we couldn't go on and try to make the future winters and albums like this, which are even crazier productions. I was cursing every day that God damn it, we need our own studio. So I decided that something had to be done. The reason why I've always recorded as much as possible on my own is because I've always had a very specific vision for my music and the production, you know, the sound that I hear in my head, which is this insane wall of sound with tight heavy guitars, massive bass and drums, and creating another universe around all that heavy stuff with shitload of synthesizers, samples and orchestration, and getting all that chaos working perfectly together as controlled chaos. I've studied and worked on recording and music production for years to the level where I now know how I can create this sound. But now I need the workplace to make it happen. Actually sometimes these massive visions are pissing me off because I can't make them a reality with my current resources. Sometimes I think maybe I should have just joined a simple rock and roll band. Time 1 and 2 and the future Winters and albums are not your everyday normal records. They are massive productions and few months of studio time is not nearly enough for these kinds of albums. And unfortunately the recording possibilities in my small room in an apartment building are very limited. For some things I've been forced to use third party studios but I've never felt comfortable in them because I'm not familiar and used to the place or the mixing room, the speakers, the gear and the software and so on. And having the taximeter running all the time, making the experience very stressful. And you can't live there 24 seven. I live and breathe music, so I need to be able to wake up from my bed and walk into the mixing room in my underwear and start recording loud guitar amps in the middle of the night. Also, I don't like having other people being in charge of my vision for my music because they simply do not understand it. I've never gotten 100% satisfying results in third-party studios. Not to mention it is very expensive and we'd rather invest that money in our own studio. That's why the traditional way of making albums doesn't work for Winter Sun. So it is absolutely necessary to get our own studio a workplace with enough space where I can mix day and night and record loud guitar amps, drums, bass or whatever and also record and practice my vocals without disturbing the neighbors or without the neighbors disturbing me. The studio would function also as our own rehearsal place where we could practice more together and work on our live production as well. But how would we fund such a project? There seemed to be no hope. We had heard suggestions from our fans for many years that we should do a crowdfunding campaign and that they would definitely support us. We weren't first that excited about it because we didn't like the idea of fans donating us money without getting anything back or having to wait for some project that would be finished in the distant future. But we started looking into it more and more 
and thinking about it. Hmm, what kind of crowdfunding campaign would it be? And what could we offer for our fans? And it started making sense that we could actually pull this off and at the same time offer something truly great for our fans. Something with great value. You know, create a win-win scenario for everyone. As we started doing more research, we realized that all these crowdfundings that bands are doing are so confusing with million different items like used socks for a thousand bucks or whatever, which gave us the idea that we would do this differently, cut all the crap and make it really simple, effective and valuable for our fans. We decided to make one massive Winter Sun crowdfunding package, including our new album and offer it for a really great price. We knew we had the needed number of fans who would absolutely support our cause. We knew this because of all the fan support so far, buying our albums and coming to our shows, and all the supportive comments on our Facebook page. We did research and asked offers from construction companies and professional studio designers and calculated that we would need approximately 500,000 euros, excluding taxes, to build such a studio. And we were like, shit, this is pretty insane, if not impossible. But then we started thinking if the Winters on crowdfunding package would cost 50 euros and 10,000 fans would get it, that would already make the 500,000 euros we needed. And since Nuclear Blast had already sold 100,000 copies of our albums, we thought that okay, maybe this would be possible after all. We even did a survey on Facebook and it got almost 9,000 people wanting to take part in our crowdfunding campaign. We thought that's pretty good, but we calculated that we would need at least 15,000 supporters to buy our 50 euro crowdfunding package. That would make 750,000, which would also cover taxes and other necessary expenses. We wanted to make sure that this would work 100% and we already had so much material and ideas. So we decided to do three different massive crowdfundings with one 50 euro winters on package in each campaign. Then we would only need 5,000 supporters for each campaign, which is like 1% of our fans. So we knew we could make this happen. It would be a really sad day for music if 100,000 people buy our albums from the record label, but when they have the chance to support the band directly and get an incredible Winters on package with a new album, the band wouldn't even get 5,000 supporters for a good cause, taking the band to the next level and helping them to make more albums faster and with better production. So, we shall see. We started making these three massive winters on crowdfunding packages and planning the three different crowdfunding campaigns. The first package was done and it took a bit longer than expected because we wanted to make it really amazing and give great value for our fans. And we are happy to say that it includes our new full-length album, finally. We are so happy and proud of the first Winterson package and also very confident about it. We believe we can already reach the ultimate final goal with this first campaign and reach the 15,000 fans we need. Then we could build the studio immediately and get to the next level and the fans would get all the unreleased and future material much much faster and with way better production than before. And of course the fans will get a new Winterson album with killer extra content immediately, if they will support us now. The Forest Seasons album was born out of necessity. 
After I realized that I could not finish time two yet, I thought, well, I need to do something. By that time, I had already started to do a little remastering on our first album and time one. So I thought these would make two great items for the crowdfunding. We had also done a live multitrack recording of our Tuska festival performance. And I listened to it and thought, okay, this sounds pretty good. I'm gonna mix and master this and make it great. And the end result was a solid live album and it became another great item for the package. Then I thought, okay, I wanna make one new epic song for the crowdfunders. Something that I could do with my resources. Something new and different and special. During that time in the summer, I was wandering through this beautiful and magical forest close to my home and I was blown away by the raw beauty of nature and I felt the trees whispering in my ears and the inspiration hit me. Then I found this really cool riff and melody from my library of ideas that perfectly reflected my awakening in the forest and I started working on this song like a madman. When the dark rain, the grey mountains sing Sad song of winter and the howling wind Wizards of the past in the haunting dreams Wander the dead sky under the winter trees The night falls upon the forest that waves Father of shadows, that forever, that forever sleeps. The night falls upon the forest and the waves. Father of shadows, that forever, that forever. This song became The Forest That Weaves. It's something new and a little bit different from what we have usually done, but I like to surprise people and also challenge myself. This is actually the mystery song that we've been playing live already, but we didn't tell anyone what it was, but now you know. As time went on, I felt that we needed to have more in the package and make it even bigger. As the song The Forest That Weeps was finished, I got inspiration for new songs with similar style. And before I knew it, I had great starting points for three new epic songs. And I felt I needed to make a full album from them. It was destiny. As I was working on the new album and the song started to emerge, I noticed that all of the four songs had the same vibe but all still quite different in some way. They were all complementing each other, but each of them being very unique. The song Loneliness has this cold and lonely winter feeling to it, and it's probably the most beautiful and definitely the most sorrowful song that are written to this day. Of course there's still silver leaves waiting on time too, but that'll have to wait for now. Sorry. But then, on the other hand, the forest that weaves had this energetic and epic summer feeling about it, but still keeping this dark and sorrowful feeling behind it, that the summer is ending and winter is coming. So this song was the total opposite, a big contrast, but still they felt like they should be on the same album. It 
Eternal Darkness is probably the darkest song I've ever written and it definitely has this gloomy, evil and mysterious autumn feeling. As you may know, Finnish autumns are very dark, long and depressing. You hardly see the sun at all. This song is about death as metaphorically everything dies in autumn. It also has this twist that a lot of it is written from death's point of view and how it sees life as a mistake in the universe. Also my dad died during autumn time, so I wrote the song also about that. And in many ways this album is very personal to me, much more than the previous albums I've done. I'm especially proud of the lyrics, and although I do say so myself, the lyrics on this album are my finest writing to this day. Awaken from the dark slumber, as the name suggests, is definitely the spring song, as it is the most energetic and bombastic song on the album. Although the first part of the song is quite mystical and dark, illustrating the sleep, the slumber before spring. In the second part, the awakening, you really get the spring energy with some epic killer riffs, melodies and grooving drums. It's also a metaphor about the awakening of minds in our crazy world and in my personal life too, which is kind of what this crowdfunding is also about. All the songs on this album are massive and long epic journeys, two of them over 12 minutes and two of them even over 14 minutes long. Awaken from the Dark Slumber and Eternal Darkness are multi-part songs in the vein of Star Child and Sons of Winter and Stars, which we know our fans just love. It was a lot of hard work, but in the end it all came together effortlessly. It was clear that this album was going to be our version of Vivaldi's The Four Seasons, although it has nothing to do with Vivaldi musically or with classical music. It's very much solid winter sun material. Nothing like this has ever been done in the heavy metal scene. It's one of a kind album and we call it The Forest Seasons. One thing I can say about our new album, The Forest Seasons, is that for the first time in my life I got the production finally right. It's perfect. After over 20 years of insane work and dedication to learn music and music production and dealing with the lack of resources and the frustration that comes with it, I finally succeeded making at least one album with the perfect sound. And by perfect I mean the right sound. Some people probably know me as a bit of a hi-fi freak and always searching for the perfect sound. And that is true, but I know there's no perfection. But there is the right sound for every song and every album. 
What made this possible was the fact that the Forest Seasons represents a style of music that we could do with the resources we have. This album doesn't need the big budget high end production. In fact, it would suffer from it because it needs to have a little bit of primitive and organic feel to it. Actually, the Forest Seasons is kind of a mix of primitive and modern sound. And that's what makes it really unique. And that's why we love it. The album is not over-polished, auto-tuned or triggered with machine-like drum samples. On the contrary, the sound of this album is more natural while still modern for a reason. Because it's about forest and nature season changes with also metaphors to the modern world. For example, for the guitars I used my old modeling amp Tone Lab, which has been my secret weapon and has served me well for years. Killer lead sound by the way. I tweaked the rhythm guitar sound to be a bit cold and harsh, but that's the right sound for this album. But this sound is only meant for this album. It would not work at all for Time 2 or our other feature albums which are very different musically and have totally different atmosphere. Those albums are meant to have purely high-end modern sound, which is the right sound for them. So they need to be perfect as well, now that I've set the bar that high. The Forest Season sounds massive and it easily holds up to my favorite mixing references, like Metallica's Black Album, Madonna's Confessions on a Dance Floor, or maybe some Imprints and Chloe, Carpenter Brut, Periphery, or Andy Sneep's mixes, which I love. I've listened to the Forest Seasons on many speakers and headphones in different places and rooms, and it always sounds great. Let me be clear, an album with a big budget or a small budget doesn't actually mean the album is any better or worse. You know, whether an album production costs a million bucks in a high-end studio or a hundred bucks in a bedroom studio, it doesn't mean that the other album is any better or worse. They can be equally good or the smaller budget album could even be better. So the greatness of music isn't measured in money or even the complexity or simplicity of the music. It's all subjective. Certain style albums need a certain production, a certain sound. You need the right sound for every album to get your message, intention and vision across. Unfortunately, some albums need a sound that can only be achieved with high-end gear in high-end studios with expensive production. And then again, some albums would sound like shit with that production. I mean, imagine some black metal album with Metallica's black album sound, or the black album with a black metal sound. Just wouldn't work. Some albums require a cheap sound recorded in a basement to create the right atmosphere. And some albums need an expensive sound. That's just the way it is. What is important is that the vision and intention of the artist get across. Unfortunately, Time 1 and 2 are massive big budget albums. My mistake was that I didn't realize it when I started working on them. I thought I could make them with the resources I had, but oh how wrong I was. I mean, Time 1 doesn't sound that bad, but I failed in my true vision for it and I had to release it compromised. That's why we won't release Time 2 until we have our own studio where we are able to craft the right sound for it. Also the problem is that the future material I've written for Winter Sun requires expensive production as well. I've written lots of cheap production material too, like primitive black metal stuff and of course I could spend my time recording that and I probably will if this crowdfunding doesn't work out. But it's not what we want to do. The material I've written and what we want to record 
is more futuristic and sci-fi oriented, out of this world material that we have shitloads already just waiting to be recorded. This is the music we are the most excited about and the most inspired to start working on and sharing it to the world. This is what we truly want to do. But we are not going to compromise the quality of these albums, so there's no way we can make these albums without our own proper studio. So we need our fans now more than ever to make this studio project and these future albums a reality. This time we recorded the vocals a bit differently. We built this unusual vocal booth in my workspace using thick acoustic curtains. They helped quite a lot controlling the room echo, which is important to Yari. The drier the sound, the more you can compress and manipulate it in order to fit it in the mix. I used my trusty old Shure SM7B with Universal Audio's Apollo interface with couple of plugins on the way in and I got even better sound than ever before. Lost in the beautiful silence. Oh, the beautiful silence! I recorded during the night time, so it was quite surreal and funny at the same time. Think about it, a grown man screaming his guts out in the middle of night when everybody else is sleeping. I created my own fears! The mist of sorrow was circled by thoughts! It was quite isolated and lonely as well, but it gave me total focus and lots of emotion to my performance. Especially for the last song on the album, called Loneliness. The surroundings were perfect for recording. I've never been able to put so much pure emotion into a song. So I'm really happy about the vocals on this album. During Time One recordings, we realized that Yukka has a killer low growling voice. This new album has a darker tone overall, and we wanted to give it some balls by exploiting Yukka's voice a bit more, and it fit perfectly into the songs and the album's atmosphere. Die! 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 <laughs> yeah, lucky. Die! Die! <laughs> die! Die! Do that to. Die! Die! Tormentor in the restless. Tormentor in the rest. Less. Tormentor in the rest. <laughs> Tormentor. <laughs> <laughs> Awaken. 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 Siis tonne matalaa osasto. Joo. Noin matalaa. Niin matalaa kuin saa. Siellä vaan niin matalaa saat. Okei. From the dark slumber. From the dark slumber. Dark kipitä sulla vähän pidempi. From the dark slumber. From, from, from the dark. From the dark, from the dark. 
back from the dark slumber. Ja. From the dark, from the dark slumber. Ja, lieber. From the dark slumber. <lacht> Mä tässä voi... Tota... The forest that weeps. Vähän tommonen sikapossu osasto ehkä enemmän. The forest that weeps. Nyt on ehkä vielä parempi. Ei ole ehkä niin matala, mutta oli parempi räkä. Niin, siitä, kun se oli ehkä aika mutane, semmonen... Tossa mm. oli vähän... The forest that weeps. Joo, toi kyllä hyvä. Vähän se alkoi ehkä huonoa. Vähän aika valmiin. Hmm? Ai niin, niin matala kuin... Mä kokeilen nyt niin matalaa kuin lähtee. Joo. The last No oho, nyt mentiin Alku niin hyvin. matalalle, että... Alku lähti hyvin. Mm. Joo, toi Forest oli vituva. Mm. Ehkä paras so far. Mut haluut sä... Noin matalaa siitä, vai pitäisikö se olla enemmän semmonen meikäläisen miklempi? No itse asiassa toi, toi on just hyvä. Okei. Okay. <laughs> The forest that weeps! Toi oli vituva. Nyt lähti vähän parempi. Joo, toi oli vituva. Nyt, nyt se sai vähän... Nyt toi. se sai jo vähän sointia toi homma. Toi oli paras so far. Et no aikaisemmat on vähän tommosii... Vähän niinku... Huollu kieli. Soittimessa. The forest that waits. Kuunnellaan. Weeps oli kohtalainen. Mm. But you can do better. Yes, yes. The forest that waits. The forest that waits. That forever sleeps. 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 To looks nice for her. And I want to. That forever. Sleeps that forever. That sleeps that forever. Sleeps. Cool. It's something that they. What's a phrase? Sleeps. Tino on enemmän pyytä. Sleeps. No toi on aika viemäri. Se voi heittää kyse viemäriin takaisin. That forever, that forever sleeps. Why is that? Sleeps, 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 sleeps. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's sleep. Let's go. That forever sleeps. That forever sleeps. Tässä on aivan se leaves. Olen ainakin matala. In my opinion, Jukka has the best low crawling voice in the world. Snips, 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 snips. The night falls upon the forest that waves. The forest that waves. Besides me, also Temu's growling voice has progressed nicely, so he participated on some additional growls as well to give the album a little extra dose of energy.
When I wrote the song The Forest That Weeps, I knew immediately that this song's chorus was going to need a massive and epic choir. For time one, we did this Expendables choir session and we invited some friends and key players in the Finnish heavy metal scene to help us out. And one major player even all the way from the Faroe Islands. In the dark rain, the rain mountains sing A sad song of winter and a howling wind Visions of the past in the haunting dreams Under the dead sky, under the withered trees <laughs> So we thought, why not do it again? But this time why don't we invite even more singers and make it even more epic and gigantic with reinforcements? We asked all the same guys and more, and we were really honored that so many said yes and showed up to sing. In the dark rain, the gray mountains sing A sad song of winter and the howling wind Visions of the past in the haunting dream better when Nino is there. 
Sun pitää jäädä sinne, ne on ollut ma- heti paremmin, kun sä olet siinä Mä oon täällä. <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. Let's try one more, like that. Think of Nino. Yes, I think we got it. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. You know what we have to do right now. Do the last line. So, one the dance guy. <laughs> so everyone ready? Do your best. That's enough. Ready? Here we go. What are you talking about, guys? You you can do this. Let's hear it. No problem. This is easy. Okay, let's do it again. Yeah, let's hear that one. Perfect. Oh. Mela, no. Nino has a surprise for you. <laughs> the session was held at Sonic Pump Studios in Helsinki. Even the studio manager Nino showed up to serve some cognac and loosen up the vocal cords. We record a bunch of takes with different styles of voices in low octave and in high octave, which many feared because there was this one difficult high note. But everyone handled it like professionals, so maybe the cognac did the trick. Let's do this shit! Under the dead sky! Ready? Now that everyone is warmed up, let's do this. Here we go.
Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> King Diamond version. Okay, so let's do exaggerated version, like the most vibrato and epicness you can do. It's getting, it's getting fucking better. Yes, <laughs> it's getting epicer. Do that again. Holy shit. I'm getting gooseies again. Third line, visions of the past in the haunting dreams. Visions of the past in the haunting dreams. Here we go. Excellent. I love it. Okay, everyone ready? Last line. Yeah. Okay. By the way, try to put on the last word trees more volume. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, perfect. Let's hear it. You guys are professionals. <laughs> so, one more time. This is gonna be the best take. Yes, I think we got it. Somebody had a nice uh, start. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try one more, one more. Full power! That was fucking best. Let's hear it. That was the best. We got it! Thank you guys! Fucking amazing! Fucking great! Right, the thing was not one. That was faster than I thought. A lot? Faster, yeah. yeah. You guys are fucking professionals. <coughs> well, thanks, you too. I mean, we had to help Harry a bit there. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's this for? Sounds like winter sun.
Congratulations on a song well done. <laughs> Thank you. Ihan tohon Radio Rock pituuteen toi nyt ei oikein kyllä mene. We had tons of fun and the end result was exactly what we were going for. Really epic and cinematic choir. It was so much testosterone in one room. Next time, maybe all female choir. And what happened after the singing session shall remain a secret. I felt the chorus in the song Awaken from the Dark Slumber demanded clean vocals because the melody was great and very sing-along type of chorus. I recorded demo vocals on it and felt that this was going to need a big choir as well, but not necessarily the same feel as in The Forest That Weeps. And we thought maybe we could record this just with the three of us and to have more authentic feeling of the live singing of Winter Sun. So Jari, Teemu and I did another choir session together. It was actually the first time in the band's history recording like this. So first Jari sent us the demo vocal track to learn on our own, and then we got together to practice with acoustic guitars, working on details and getting our voices synchronized. And after a few hours we realized that, hey, this is gonna work out great. special curtain vocal booth. After warming up, we recorded a few takes to see how it all sounds together, and we realized it needs something more. We experimented with different vocal styles and mixed them together to make it sound like there's even more people singing. From the realms, from the realms, from the realms. From the realms below we ride, and in terror they run and hide. From the shadows of all we rise, awaken from the dark. Over the ancient ruins we fly, where the old kings go to die, and new kingdoms rising high. Awaken from the dark, dark slumber. Rum, rum, from the realms below we ride. From the realms below we ride, and in terror they run and hide. From the shadows of all we rise, 
Awaken from the dark, over the ancient ruins we fly, where the old kings go to die, a new kingdom's rising high. Awaken from the dark, dark slumber. From the realms below. Ready? Ready. Yeah. From the realms below we ride, and in terror they run and hide. From the shadows of all we rise, awaken from the dark. Over the ancient ruins we fly, where the old kings go to die. A new kingdom's rising high. Awaken from the dark, dark slumber. Ja hyvä nuotille, mutta rytmi oli vähän, ettei se haittaa. Mm. Vieläkö te... yksi? Mennään no mennään vielä yksi, perkki. Viimeinen no. oli mikä oli. Mm. <laughs> Kaikki peli. Joo. Vesikin loppu saat. Rennosti. Jylhästi. Ready. From the realms! From the realms below we ride And in terror they run and hide From the shadows of all we rise Awaken from the dark Over the ancient ruins we fly Where the old kings go to Siinä oli kyllä attitude. Joo. Besides normal sounds, ranging from a more nasal sound to a more chesty and manly voice, we also did an operatic voice and a trunk and raspy pirate voice, all in two different octaves, which sounded quite funny at first, but when listening them together in the mix, it all started sounding credible and great together. We were really satisfied with and proud of the amazing end result. I think we might do these kinds of choirs again in the future. It's epic and it has lots of energy. A few years back when I started making the Forest Seasons album and thinking about and planning the crowdfunding, I knew we would need to make many videos for it. Also I've been wanting to shoot more video of our band as video has become a very important tool for promotion. So I started learning video but then I fell in love with photography as well. I really enjoyed going outside for some runs to stay healthy and bring the camera with me. I started getting some great photos from this magical nearby forest and they supported my vision for the album perfectly. Then I thought that why not make the whole booklet myself? You know, do it yourself. This way it would be really personal as the photos are from the same forest where the inspiration for this album originally came from. I literally took thousands of photos over these two years and the best ones ended up in the booklet. Then we came up with the idea that every band member 
would represent a different season in the booklet. We wanted the scenes to be realistic, so we decided to shoot outdoors instead of a photo studio with a green screen. We ordered these cheap Star Wars cloaks online and the plan was to photoshop forest textures like bark, ice, leaves on top of them and our faces to make us look like spirits of the forest. Eternal Darkness, which is the autumn song, is the darkest track on the album. I'm a big fan of the band Kiss and the bass player Gene Simmons has this evil image in the band. So I decided that our bass player Jukka should represent autumn. I found a killer location from the forest, so we packed our gear and went out on a little hiking adventure. It was pretty cold and windy and it was hard to get the cheap cloak to stay in the right form. We shot from light till dark on two days and then finally we got the money shot. Then the winter and snow came and it was time for my photo shoot. Obviously I was going to represent winter. It was quite challenging to shoot in the freezing weather. We wanted to get the morning sun and the fields of snow as a reference to the song lyrics. So we went to the frozen sea nearby. We tried a couple of different locations and we walked through the misty fields of snow searching for the best untouched spot. That didn't work quite as well as hoped, so we headed back to the forest to find a new location. We climbed up this epic forest mountain and walked in knee-deep snow. Finally, we found a killer location on top of the mountain with a view over the fields of snow and the morning sun shining through the wintry clouds. I really had to dig deep to get the perfect pose and expression to convey the melancholic and lonesome mood of the song. And at the end of the day, we got the money shot. Pemu was going to represent Spring as he is the youngest and the most energetic guy in the band. For me, springtime means lots of new energy and feeling alive after a long winter. I wanted to get the early morning sunrise for the shot in this mystical location, where the sun rises beautifully just from the right angle, shining through the trees. We had to wake up 4 a.m. and bicycle to the forest with all the gear and get everything set up before the sunrise. This time we incorporated a tree flash setup with natural light to enhance the light source even more and to get some nice rim lighting to separate the subject from the background and not overexpose the sunrise. For Temu's pose we wanted him to look like he's summoning the spring sun. The nature cooperated with us and granted us a great sunrise at the perfect time. So we got the money shot. Summer was chosen for Kai, as he's an easygoing, relaxed guy and makes everybody feel warm around him. I was again hunting for locations and found the perfect place in the summer forest, nearby the water, where the sunset was really beautiful and brought out the summer colors perfectly. We wanted Kai to look like the summer spirit, conjuring all things in the forest, and at the end of the day, we were able to get a great wizard-like pose from him. And then it was time for a few beers after we got the money shot. For 
for the album cover, I had a clear vision based on the song The Forest That Weeps, as it is the original root song of the album. Due to the lyrical content and the summer atmosphere of this song, I wanted the album cover to have a beautiful yet dark and mystical summer forest scenery with colors of green, yellow and brown. There needed to be pines and spruces and a morning sun with rays of light shining through the trees. In the middle of the cover I envisioned a stream leading you through the forest. As the concept of the album started growing into the season's theme, I envisioned all the seasons merging together in the cover seamlessly. I wanted winter to be the background and summer the foreground, with the stream frozen and melting towards the summer, and with hints of autumn in between. Winter of course needed some snowfall, and then I thought it could even slightly blend to the foreground, but the dominant force of the cover still being summer. For spring, I wanted a pale morning sun shining through the trees and representing the awakening of the forest. I, the in the dirt. I also wanted to have special and epic wooden frames for the cover to have a painting-like look to it. And as the album has an atmosphere of the forest being alive with different forest creatures, I wanted the frames to have statue-like animals on them. To give a final touch for the cover, I went to the forest and took a photo of a pine tree trunk and used the bark texture to create a new version of the Winter Sun logo, specifically fitting for the album's theme. We wanted the Forest Seasons cover to be different than before and have more painting-like style. So we found this artist called Gaiula Havanchak and chose him for the job. He executed my idea perfectly with a cover that takes you into this mystical forest that I was envisioning. But then we needed a master cover for the whole forest package as well. So for this job, we chose Cameron Gray, who also did our Time One cover. And he delivered a great cover, which represents the new album, but also the remasters of our previous albums and all the other content in the Forest package. And finally, the new album. It was done, and we were really excited about it. What had originally started as one epic song had blossomed into a full-blown Winter Sun album. Can you believe it? Then it was time to think how we were gonna release it to everyone. We had long and productive negotiations with our record label Nuclear Blast, and we finally came to a great solution that would work for everyone. This means we could go on with our crowdfunding plans, selling our music directly to our fans, and build the Winter Sun headquarters. So we are now offering the Forest Seasons album in our crowdfunding, with lots of killer extra content. Everything is in one package, called the Forest Package, and it includes the new album with the absolute highest quality master files, exported straight from my master projects and it also comes with the highest quality mp3s with embedded lyrics so you can listen to the album also on the go with your mobile devices it's a unique album 
influenced by the magic of nature's season changes, with one song representing each season. That means four epic and monumental songs with over 53 minutes of total running time. It has distinctive winter sun sound while exploring lots of new musical elements and dimensions. We think this album will blow everyone's mind. Our fans love the limited edition instrumental version of Time One, so we decided to do it again with this album. So the Forest package includes the full instrumental version of the Forest Seasons, but we also took it a step further and included the isolated tracks of all the songs. So people get to listen the whole album with just the drums if you like. just the bass or just the rhythm guitars Just the melody and solo guitars. Or just the orchestrations and synths. Even just only the vocals. Completion of the perfect chaos! Pure destruction of stars! This means our fans get to hear even the smallest details of a Winters on album for the first time and discover and explore all the layers of different instruments and vocals. This is also very educational because people get to learn how the Winter Sun songs are built and composed. For anybody wanting to learn to play the Winter Sun songs, the isolated tracks can be a priceless tool. Everyone can also mix their own special versions of this album or just have fun and play along. The Forest package also comes with remasters of our previous albums with up-to-date killer sound. Just like with the Forest Seasons album, they come with both the highest quality master files and MP3s for mobile devices. These remasters are anti-loudness war versions with lots of mastering refinements, like clearer treble, deeper and tighter bass, the drums are a bit louder and the overall sound is more punchy and dynamic. Also the debut album includes the original colossal Winter Madness intro and a new track order like it was originally meant to be.
Besides all this great content already, we wanted to make it even bigger and include one more album. Back in 2013, we recorded our show from Tuska Open Air Metal Festival in Helsinki, Finland. It was multitrack recorded, which meant that I could make a professional mix and master out of it. And the end result turned out great. We played quite early in the day, but there was already a sea of people that came to see us, and the atmosphere was absolutely incredible. The album will also have an amazing 30-page digital booklet with killer photos from the show. We already had a great package put together. But we started thinking, how about we still make something really special for the crowdfunders? Over the years, many of our fans have wanted to hear acoustic versions of our songs, but we've never had the chance to do it properly. We knew the song Loneliness on the Forest Seasons album would work great as an acoustic version, because of the feel of the song and most of the guitar riffs and melodies seem to work great with acoustic guitars and also because it's mostly clean vocals. The, the original version has one crawling part but I came up with a new melody for it to make the whole acoustic version all clean vocals. We started testing guitars for different parts and different sounds and we realized that some of the parts were quite challenging and required specific type of acoustic guitars. We used a couple from Temu's collection and with the help of Levetukku, the local Ibanez distributor, we found a couple of just the right type with the right sound for the song. The acoustic version also has additional samples like kantele and cellos and it has a whole new arrangement, giving it a new perspective. We're really proud how it turned out, and we think our fans will love it. All this completes our massive forest package. 
We can't stress how extremely proud we are about all the content we've created for this crowdfunding package for our fans. We think it's really amazing value for those who decide to support and take part in our crowdfunding. Our fans have been really amazing and loyal during all these years, ever since the first album. And now we welcome our fans again on a new journey to take Winter Sun to the next level and help us to reach the crowdfunding goal and continue our work with more efficiency and to be able to produce and deliver the future Winter Sun albums to our fans. Thank you. Yes,